The World Series is on the air. This is Naven Field, Detroit, where the Detroit Tigers and the St. Louis Cardinals are battling for the World Championship. The play-by-play -play descriptions of all the World Series games are brought to you with a compliment of the Ford Motor Company, Mr. Henry Ford, Mr. Edsel Ford, and your local Ford dealer, producers and distributors of Ford and Lincoln cars and Ford trucks. The sponsors will be amply repaid. You get enjoyment from these broadcasts. At this time, during the preceding six games, we've had the pleasure of presenting Graham McNamee. He has, in his own vivid style, pictured the World Series color, excitement, and the crowd. Unfortunately, Graham had to return to New York last night, and I know he misses being here today. Please listening, we know us. Here's the beginning of this seventh and deciding game of the 1934 World Series. We miss him, as we know you do. Now for the attending pre-game tenseness and excitement of today, we turn you over to Don Wilson of New York. He'll give you the picture here, and Tom Manning will describe the first four and a half innings right. while we'll have the pleasure during the last half of the game. All right, Don Wilson, come right here and help yourself with this microphone. Thank you, Ford Bond. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hardly need to tell you that uh, there is a capacity crowd gathered here in the stands at Nathan Field in Detroit, Michigan this afternoon to witness the seventh and final game of the 1934 World Series between the Cardinals of St. Louis and the Tigers of Detroit. A capacity crowd keyed to the highest pitch for this crucial battle. Not only are the spectators in an almost state of frenzy, but the players themselves are very much on edge with their nerves being very taut, a condition which might easily be fanned into a flame because of the strain of such an exciting series, as you already know. You will recall that this is the first time since 1931 that the World Series has gone to seven games when the St. Louis Cards fought it out with Ponymax Athletics. Experts have said that this series will depend largely upon the effectiveness of the pitchers, which is quite an obvious fact in the short series. And that prediction has held true with the great teams, Dizzy and Daffy, Two Boy Roll, and Tommy Bridges. So far, Daffy Dean is the only pitcher to go through unscathed. Lowell, Bridges, Dizzy Dean, each having won one and lost one game, while Daffy has won both his starts. It was right here in Detroit that this whole World Series this year opened, and that first game was conspicuous for two particular reasons. The blowing up of the Tiger infield, which may be accredited to over-anxiety, and uh, the pitching of Dizzy Dean, the card winning 8-3 to three in that first game. Then the second game came along, and it was marked by the outstanding pitching performance of schoolboy Rowe for Detroit. He turned in an all-time standout accomplishment of retiring 22 men in a row. Then the scene of the battle changed down to Sportsman Park in St. Louis. Paul oh, Daffy Dean was in the box for the card. Lacking his usual control, Daffy frequently was trailing the batter, who had this youngest of the Dean brothers uh, up three to two. As a result, Paul had the bases populated most every inning during that game, but due to the fine support and teamwork of the entire Cardinals squad and some mighty crafty cagedness on Daffy's part, the Cards came through to win 4-1. to one. Then came the fourth game of this series, and the Tigers' balls were sharpened to needle point. Detroit's batting strength, overpowering St. Louis, with Detroit winning to the tune of 10-4. But this game gave us the finest pitching of this series to date. A most enviable record being turned in by Tommy Bridges of the Detroit Tigers, who pitched the sharpest breaking ball that he has ever had, and who would have had a shutout for his credit, but for one Mr. Delancey, the stalwart card catcher, who pulled a long one out for a homer, scoring the only run for St. Louis, the Tigers winning 3-1. That brings us down to yesterday's game here in Detroit, which was one of those good old-fashioned ball games as we listened to it. Starring honors going to one Leo DeRocher, card shortstop, golf admittedly, rather a poor hitter who knocked the old apple all over the lot, getting three hits out of four times at bat. Bruce Joplin also gets a hand for his spectacular catch with his back against the fence of Delancey's bid for an extra base hit. Cards winning, as you well know, yesterday, 4-3, and what a ball game that was. This brings us down to the task at hand, the present task, this seventh and deciding game for the World Championship. And don't you for one minute think that those men down there won't all be giving everything that they have this afternoon, not only for the honor of winning gold rags,
bag, emblematic of the world baseball champion, but for the $1,800 at stake, which is the difference between $5,700 and $3,900 as the players share for the winners. You know, I've been sitting at home in New York listening to Ford Vaughn and Tom Manning give us their very splendid reports on these games and listening to Mac, as we so affectionately call Graham McNamee, giving us this pregame color and his very pertinent remarks throughout the game. I've been sitting at home in New York listening to these reports just as you have. And as I was flying through the air by plane between here and New York last night, it occurred to me that I'd like to know just a little bit more about these players whose names have become almost household words during this series. So thinking that perhaps uh, many of you listening in in our radio audience might be interested in the same thing, I dug down into the voluminous biographical file and have here some highly informative data which I think perhaps many of our radio audience will be interested in. Before we give that to you, just a few moments before we took the air, there was a huge floral horseshoe taken in here and placed just to the left of the batter's box here at Haven Field for this World Series. It was uh, brought in by Tommy Richardson, Mickey Cochran's straight man, and Patsy O'Toole, nationally known as probably the noisiest baseball rooter in America. This huge floral tribute will be presented to Mickey Cochran, manager of the Detroit Tigers. The Cardinals being the visitors today, let's, let's look down and see what happens and some of the facts pertaining to some of their players. We find John Pepper Martin is their third baseman, and incidentally, Pepper, as you probably already are cognizant of, head to the batting list for the St. Louis Nationals. Pepper Martin, the wild horse of the Osage and the outstanding hero of the 1931 World Series. He's the Cardinals' regular third baseman instead of center fielder as he was in the 1931 Series. Martin has improved his play around the hot corner so much that he is considered by many as one of the fastest fielding third basemen in the National League. He's like a cat on punch down the third baseline and possesses an arm of steel. There's no doubt about his batting and base running. He ranks among the best four players in the Heidler circuit. His 1934 record shows that he's bat 289, fielding 942. That's Martin heading the batting list for the card. Then comes right fielder John Rothrock. John Rothrock has been batting around the majors for the past five or six years. Most of the time he spent trying to make good with the Boston Red Sox. An injury to his leg while running the bases hampered his work, and he never until now reached stardom. We met him down at the hotel this morning, and he is a fine specimen of athletic fitness. Rothrock was used in most other positions of the Sox, but did not catch a pitch. He was sent to Columbus in the American Association, a farm team with the Cardinal chain, and there played such stellar ball that the Cardinal management decided to give him another chance. He played a fine game for the Cards this season and has come through with many a timely ball. Jack is a finished fielder and his throwing arm is one of the very best. He's also very, very fast on the base. He's one of the few Cardinal players who have not started in their chain store and worked himself up into the major league team. This is his first chance in the World Series and he has shown the temperament and ability to do great things. 1934 record, batting 284, fielding 978. Then we come to Frankie Frey, the second baseman and playing manager for the St. Louis Cardinals. Frankie was made manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. He said that he would instill the McGraw system of playing ball in the Cardinals' scheme of things. And so far, he's carried it out to the letter. But you know, he's a member of the Giants for eight years, and in that time, he absorbed all of McGraw's methods. He has his teammates on the call to insist that they take an extra base every time there's a possibility of making it. Mike is a great believer in the hit and run play, which made McGraw one of the most feared managers in baseball. The bottom flash may not be as powerful as the old Zion manager was, but he's very, very close to it. Frank is one of the greatest money players ever to take part in the World Series. His ability for making seemingly impossible plays and uh, playing bang up ball when the going is the toughest seems to be one of Frankie's main points. Not suffered in all his around play since he took over the managership of the St. Louis team. His 1934 record, batting 306, fielding 971. Then we have at left field, Joel Ducky Wucky Medwick. Ducky Wucky Medwick, the slugging young Hungarian of the Cardinals, is one of the hardest hitters in the National League. 
He gave promise after his first season in the majors in 1933 of being a coming star, and he remained among the first five batters most of the season, but a slump dropped him from that select circle. Hendrix is one of the leading extra base hitters of the National League and one of its leading run scorers and batter in of run. He has a great throwing arm and covers a lot of territory in that old left field garden out there. Hendricks has never failed to hit below the 300 mark in all the six years that he's been playing in the minor and major league baseball. He makes his home in New Jersey and first began playing center pro ball around that section. The Cardinals picked him up and uh, played with them with their farm in 1930. Let's listen to the Star Spangled Banner. Hank Greenberg takes a few steps over toward the pitcher, yelling words of encouragement. 
Walker taking his time, and now the windup. All three. The strike ball. A turning back ball is right down the alley, dead high. Harry Gargo behind the back, clears the first. Owen the second, and Slum umpiring the third. The fifth, three and one. The strike ball. Three and two. Yes, sir, the fans are really pepped up this afternoon. Another capacity crowd here. The sun is shining brightly. There's a wind blowing in from right field this afternoon. Three and two is the count. And here it is. Iceberg. He gets the count three and nothing on the first hitter, Pepper Martin. He then sucks three of them right down the alley, and finally with a count three and two, Pepper Martin swung and missed. One gone, nobody on. Flat rock up. The fifth, it's a strike. Foul. Elder Walker had plenty on that one. Here's the wind up again. It's a drive in the center field, a base hit. Right is going over the ball, is hit into the center field. Rock Rock is rounding first, the throw. Rock Rock the second, it's a double. Jack Rock Rock nailed that ball, a scorching line drive. Into left center field with Jojo White going back fast. He knocked the ball down, and before he could pick it up and get it back to the infield, Rock Rock was on second base. A two-bagger for Rock Rock and manager Frankie Frick is coming up. Umpire Harry Geisel delayed proceeding for a moment to brush off the dish. Harry Geisel, you know, the boys are all very much satisfied with the ball and strike decisions of all of these umpires. Here we go now, ready to go on quick. One goal, one on second. Ball one, a hook ball is high and outside. It's the first inning, left rock on second. The pitch. The high fly ball out in the short center field. Rogel going back, White coming in. Rogel has it. Two out. Rock Rock on second. Frankie Creek swung at that ball. It was a high pitch inside, getting the ball on the handle of his back. And Jojo White, Billy Rogel were off with the crack of the bat. Rogel turning around and making a neat catch for out number two. Joe Medwick. Joey Medwick, the Cardinal left fielder is up. A right-hand hitter. There is the stretch. And now the pitch. It's a ball. A pass ball is inside. Medwick pulls away from the plate. First inning in all. Cardinals batting two out. Jack Walcock on second. The result of a double. Ball one on Joey Medwick, the hitter. The pitch. The high infield fly ball. Going back a third base with Owen going back fast. He has it. Ball for the St. Louis Cardinals in the first inning. No run, one hit, and no error. Ford Bond. These World Series broadcasts are brought to you through the courtesy of the makers of the Ford V8. And here in the Cardinals half of the first inning, Martin came up, the count went to three and two, and then he went down swinging hard via the strikeout route and took that long, long left back to the bank. Jack Rothrock followed him in the batting order, banged one out into left center field for a two base hit. He rested happily down on second as Frankie first came to bat. A high fly to short left center. Rogel went back on the grass under it and had it in the pocket for the second out. Two out, one on, and Medwick up. Medwick fouled one, high behind third. Owen went out fast under it and took that one in the net. No run, one hit, no error. And a big zero hangs in the first half of the first inning for St. Louis on the scoreboard out in right field. Jim Dean is taking his place out on the mound. He's warming up with Delancey. And Jojo White is down there swinging two big black bats as he comes into the batter's box. And here's Tom Manning. You know, there's a little picture down there that we want you to get. Dizzy Dean, you know, is in the box this afternoon. Bill Hallahan was the expected pitcher. Frankie Chris said before the game that well, if Dizzy wants to go, we're going to put him in there. Perhaps he thinks that Dizzy Dean was very much instrumental in winning the pennant and he's getting the chance to pitch today. Ready to go. White is up. All one. Oh, inside. That's perhaps the reason that Dizzy Dean, with only a day's left, is in there this afternoon instead of Wild Bill Hallahan. 
Dojo Fight is up. Ball one. Strike ball. Ball one. And strike one. Dojo White, a left hand hitter. Center fielder and leadoff man of the Tigers. The wind up. One and one. Strike ball. That was a fast ball to poke over the outside corner to a left hand hitter. And it is now strike two and ball one. The wind up. The pitch. It's a foul and ball. Now the Frankie Stacey comes over. He has it. So is the column. White is out at first. One Tiger down in the first inning. That was a bounding ball that Francis Fitch came over to his left, picks it up. Mickey Cochran gets a hand, hits him. Manager Mike Cochran. There was a lot of doubt here in Detroit last night as to whether or not manager Mike would be able to play today. He was spiked and running out of hit yesterday when Paul Dean put crashed against his knees. It was a bad gap, and he was in the hospital all night. But he's out here this afternoon, helping the boys in this crucial World Series ball game. First inning, one out. Cockled up the pit. That's strike ball. Nice fast ball is right down the old alley. And he's cockling up with one out and nobody on. Drive out to left field with a foul. Ball curve foul, and the count on Cochran is strike two. Mike Cochran is up, and Gellinger will be next. Jerome Dizzy G. Strike two, the wind up. Coming. It's a ground ball down second. Fish comes up with it. Close to Collins. Cochran is out. Two out. Nobody on. Gellinger coming up. Gellinger is getting a nice ball into the play. Charlie Gellinger, you know, living up to his reputation of the past. Quiet fellow, just in there playing his best all the time, and his best is good enough. Two out. Nobody on. The pitch to Gellinger. The high fly ball out toward left field. It is curving foul with everybody after it. Nobody gets it. Ooh, Terry Hendrick was almost injured that time. He came over fast, and his side bumped into the concrete carrier in front of the boxes out there back of third base. He ran all along the gutter. But he didn't fall down, and he's all right going back out to left field. Dolly Carrier was taking no chances on that ball. He had rounded the second base and was on his way to third. The pick to drive deep into right field. Rothbach is going over near the line, under it, and he has it. That's all for the Tigers in the first inning. No one, no hit, no errors. No runs as yet. No errors. Yes, sir, Reed, Tom Manning. No runs as yet. Two of those zeros now hang out on that right field scoreboard. St. Louis, nothing. Detroit, nothing. And we end the first inning of this important ball game. Important, yes, sir, the seventh and deciding game of the 1934 World Series. The these teams battling the Detroit Tigers and the St. Louis Cardinals tied up at three games each. And here's what happened in the Tigers after the first. White came up, found it to break, and he was out first to pilot. Stopped in his back, grounded one hop down the back. He bridge who stopped it, winged it over to first base. To Rip Fallon, retiring Cochran. Right and Cochran down, and Geringer up. Geringer finally at the bang that fly out over third base and curving foul. Drove a fly out into right field, and Rathbox took it for the third out. No run, no hit, no error. Now we have the fifth man in the Cardinal batter coming up. Coming to the plate here in the second inning, and Tom Manning to give it to you. All right, Tom. It's Rip Combs, the Cardinals' first tackle, left-hand batter. Held the marker. Right-hand submariner is in the box. The wind-up, the pitch. He swings, and it's a drive out in the left center field. It's a base hit. Collins rounds first. White has the ball. Puts it into Rokel. It gets past Rokel. Carrying her backing up. Recovers the ball, and Collins stops at first. A single. Line drive out to Jojo. White, but he took on the bounce. Got away from Will Carroll on the return, but Geringer was backing up. That's the second Cardinal hit. 
Bill Delancey, the catcher, was up. The pitch. Ball on. A fast ball was back into Cochran's glove. Bill Delancey pulling away from the plate, and it is ball one. First pass of the second inning. A foul back. Strike. Ball one. Strike one. Ball one, strike one, the set. A peek over to first, the pitch. It's a ball. Outside, and the count on Bill Delancey. Left hand hitter is two and one. Elder Walker having a hard time out there in the pitching rubber, trying to get that extra third out of the way. Now he's all set to go. Ball two and strike one, the pitch. It's a bowling ball down third. Allen to Gallinger. And here's that play again with Collins on first. Bill Delancey left the ground ball to move Owen. Owen to Gellinger. Collins was out. Gellinger to Greenberg. Getting the hitter, Delancey. Two out, nobody on. Orsatti up. With the first pitch coming right up here, look out for oh, Somebody caught it. Well, that's the closest we've come to being hit so far. Foul strike one. Something about these microphones that they should not be hit by a foul ball. Strike one of the count and the pitch. That's a base hit in the right field. The ball is exceeded by Pete Fox. Returns to Rogel at second. Or Sadi stops at first. The second cardinal hit of the inning. The third of the afternoon. Leo DeLosa, the star of yesterday's ball game. Brilliant shortstop yesterday in all the has three base hits all the close the outfield. Or Sadi on first, to Ocho up the pitch. Strike, call. The Ocho, back to right-handed. There's the stretch of Peek at first. Coming, there he goes. The players at second base. He is out, stealing. Or Sadi is out, stealing. Cochran to Gallinger. A run, two hits, and four errors. In the first half of the second inning, four. Collins, the first casual batter up in the cards half the second. That one into center field over second base for a clean single. Delancey, Joe Delancey, fancy catcher of the St. Louis Cardinals, bounded one down to Marv Owen. Owen took it, stopped over to second where Geringer had it, winging it down to Greenberg for a double play. Play wiping up the bases, two out, and Orsatti coming to the back. Orsatti grounded one into right field for a single. He was on in Leo DeRosa, who came up yesterday, got three out of four, and was up there swinging that bat hard. And Orsatti went, started down to second, and was out on the block down there from Mickey Cochran's wing, retiring the side. No run, two hits, and no error. So now we come to the fourth batter in the Detroit Tigers lineup, and they come up for their half of the second. It's the Goose, Goose Goslin stepping up to the plate now, and here's Tom Manning coming in to give it to you. All right, Tom. Dizzy Dean is out there kicking some more of that dirt around the pitching rubber as we prepare to go into the tiger half of the second inning. No runs is yet. The wind-up, Goswell hitting. First ball is a slow hopper down first base. Collins takes it, crosses to Dean. He's out. Collins takes the ball, and Dean, Dizzy Dean, covers the bag, taking the throw and getting the foot out. One gone. That was a lazy, bombing ball. That's the Collins handle. Next hitter will be Billy Rogel, the little shortstop of Detroit Tigers. Billy is batting left hand of the afternoon against the right hand glance of Dizzy Dean. Here's the windup. One gone, nobody on. Long one this time. Here comes. As the bombing falls down, short to is in fact. It's close. He's safe. The ball that the Rochers came in fast for it. He threw the ball in the dirt. Collins knocked it down, and it is scored as an error for shortstop to Rochers. Rochelle safe at first on to Rochers' error. Greenberg batting. Big right hand hitter. Last half of the second inning, one out, and Rochelle is on first. 
There's the stretch. And the pitch. Strike. Ball. That was a hook ball. This tips the outside corner of the plate to Hank Greenberg. Greenberg has his jaw set down there this afternoon, swinging that bat up and down. There's the stretch. And the pitch. Strike. He swings hard and misses. And out it's two and nothing. Hank Greenberg is hitting third baseman, Corvo, and his next. Both gallows on first, one man out. Dean is pumping his left foot up and down out there on the rubber. There's the stretch now. A peak at first, and the pitch. A foul back. And the count remains strike two. Help us toss out a new ball on fire, Harry Geisel. Bill Delancey walks. Several yards out toward the pitcher's box. And then crosses it to Dizzy. Dizzy takes his glove off and first puts out toward center field. And now he's looking in at Hank Greenberg, standing out there, rubbing the ball in his bare hands. Now he's ready to go to stretch. It's strike two, you know. A play at first. Rogel is safe. Dizzy turns, stopped that ball over there with plenty on it to Rick Collins. Another stretch. The pitch. Strike three. He swung hard. Had a curveball over the outside corner. It was just above the knees and missed it for a third strike. Two men out. Both yell on first. And Merv Owen. Detroit Tiger, third baseman. Right hand hitter is up. No runs as yet, you know. There's the stretch, the pitch, the bounding ball down a couple of Martin. Martin comes up with it, throws to first, forcing Rochelle at second for the third out. No run, no hit, one error, forward bond. The Ford Motor Company is sending you to broadcast the World Series game. The National Broadcasting Company presents a special news bulletin from the Press Radio Bureau. My side plan. Spring Farm Minister Louis Barthou died today from bullet wounds inflicted by an assassin who also killed King Alexander I of Yugoslavia. It was first reported that Barthou's injuries were not serious. At first, the French cabinet has been hurriedly called into meeting to take action on the assassination of King Alexander of Yugoslavia. A grave European crisis is feared. Sound Prince Peter, 11 years old, the son of the slain king, probably will be proclaimed king within a few days. These bulletins are from the press radio bureau. For further details, read your newspaper. Here we are now, going into the first half of the third inning. Out on the mound, Eldon Alker is warming up with Mickey Thompson. We have Leo DeRocher coming up there, who was at bat when Orsatti was out of second on his field. Here's Tom Manning to give you the first half of his third inning. All right, Tom. Leo DeRocher and Obi, Cardinal, shortstop. Was at bat last inning when Orsatti was erased feeling. Well, the marker, right-hander, starts to wind up on the first pitch to DeRocher. A strike call. Here's the wind-up again. Ball on, a fastball is high inside. And the count on DeRocher is one and one. Ball two. Hawker's third ball was low and 20 outside. Two and one. Ball two and strike one. Hawker walks out of the box for second base. Now he's in there again. The windup. Strike call. That was a third ball. Right over the heart of the plate. And now the count on DeRosa is two and two. Ball two and strike two. Has a drive out of the center field. White going over a little bit under it. Waiting. He has it. One man out. Leo DeRocher, the Cardinal shortstop, fires to Jojo White. This hand is for Dizzy Dean. Jerome Dizzy Dean of the Cardinals batting. One out, nobody on. Coming. The ball up and back. 
Dizzy Dean got his bat slide out of his hand and it rolled clear down past the third base pushes. Swung at that ball and fouled it off. Now the coach is bringing it back. Dizzy walked halfway down to get it. Shaking his pitching hand that time with the bat strapped out of his hand and probably stung for a moment. Dizzy gets a big handful of dirt, rubbing that old crowd around there plenty. Much as you say, he's got a real grip on it. Going. Another foul back, strike two. The big boy is taking a lazy swing at that ball. That time he reached over the outside corner for a bad pitch. Got swung rather leisurely at it. And the count is two and nothing. Here's the wind up. Strike two on Dizzy Dean. Back one out in the left field, looks like a face hit, it is a face hit. The team is bounding first, Gosling has the ball. The team is going down, it's going to be close, it is close. He ties in, he's safe. A double for Dizzy Dean. Boy, up with 20, close to second base, but Gosling's returned to Rochelle. Boy, just a little bit on the pitcher's box side of the bag, and Dizzy Dean stood on the other side with a nice hook slide, and he is safe getting a two-base hit. A long, close swing at that ball, just cut it right, and pumped it out to left field for two bases. Pepper Martin coming up. Last time up, Pepper struck out. There's a stretch and the pitch. He wraps one out to left, it's going foul. It is foul. Strike one. Boy, those two umpires, Bill Clem and Harry Geisel, were certainly out there in position to beat that one. Other guys are running about 15 feet down for it, sir. We got a good view of that line. Right one on top of Martin. There's the stretch and the pitch. Ball one, a fast ball inside, and the count is ball one, strike one. Greenberg is playing back, so is Owen. They're not expecting it. The bunch, ball one, strike one. Ball two, the third ball is outside. You better control what this couple marks is going to do, you know. One man out, and Jimmy D is on second. There's a bounding ball down first. Greenberg has it. Walker covering. He's safe at first base. Walker coming over with Porter and couple marks. Beating by an eyelash. There's a bit of an argument going on down there at first base. Just going there. Has his hat off, standing there, telling you, you know, it's seldom in the argument. He probably said, look like we had him. The Walker and Greenberg both talking to Dean Jordan. But Pepper Martin gets it out. So it will be scored as a base hit. That puts Dizzy Dean on third base. Now we have runners on first and third. No runs in his head. One man out. And Jack Rothrock. Cardinal right fielder, left hand batter coming up. 